What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hurricane season is really ramping up, folks. We now have five, yes, five areas of interest tagged by the National Hurricane Center. I'm not joking when I'm saying this. Four out of the five have at least a medium chance of development. And the latest one just came off the coast of Africa and has a 20% chance of development. So this is what we have going on. And there are two tropical waves that I am mainly focused on. I'm focused on this tropical wave that is nearing the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, and I'm focused on this one that is over the Windward Islands. We're going to go over those two first because those are the biggest threats to land, and then we'll go over 90, uh, 99L as that has a bit of a resurgence. So we'll go ahead and first talk about this one. An area of disturbed weather located near the west, uh, northwestern and central Bahamas is expected to develop into the move into the Gulf rather by early next week, and if some slow development of this system is possible thereafter, a tropical depression could form as it moves westward and approaches the Gulf of Mexico coastline. Ten percent chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 50 percent chance of formation in in the next seven days. So that's our big situation we have going on right there. There is now a 48 hour chance of this thing developing. So this is something we need to continue monitoring. But this is something that I've been also been monitoring, and I've been monitoring this the most out of all five of these, as this has been really showing a lot of signs of organization and a lot of signs of development. It now has a 60% chance of formation in the next seven days. It has a 40% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. We're seeing a lot of organization going on right here, a lot of convection, a lot of deep convection with this. So this is something that we need to continue to pay attention as this has the biggest threat to land right now. So here's what we also have. We're also going to talk about 99L as the, but earlier this morning it had about a 30% chance of development. Now it's jumped back up to a 50% chance of development due to increasing organization that has happened over the last few hours. So these are what I'm paying attention to. We also have 98L that still has a 70% chance of formation in the next few days. So all these we have to monitor as we move into late August and into early September. So here's what we have going on. We're going to show you a few model runs we have right here. We're going to show you the European 0Z to kind of give you an idea of what's going on. So the 0Z has been tagging this thing right here in the Caribbean, has it strengthening up to a strong tropical storm before impacting Hispaniola, and pretty much near the border of Haiti and the Dominican Republic from what I've seen. It weakens to a depression, according to the Euro, and then kind of stalls out for a little bit before moving out to sea. And it also has, it isn't really tagging this area of interest right here. It's mainly been the ensembles. These two right here have piqued my interest right here. We have another wave coming off. So, yeah, this is about to get really crazy, folks. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model. The latest 12Z CMC just came out. We're going to show you that. And the CMC has a lot of stuff going on. So the, here's what we have with the Canadian. It has this thing strengthening to a strong tropical storm, 1,001 millibar system, before making landfall in Haiti, not really doing too much to it. And then strengthens up into a hurricane out to sea and potentially impacts Bermuda over there before moving towards Canada right here because... CMC's latest run now has this thing potentially impacting Newfoundland right here as either as, as either like a mid-latitude cyclone, extra tropical cyclone, or a weak hurricane going on. So that's the situation with that, and we also have this tropical wave that's expected to develop according to the CMC. There's not really that much of a pressure uh, thing tagged right here. It's kind of a small gradient. Last one we're showing you is the Icon Run, and ladies and gentlemen, you're going to want to see this. The Icon Run has this both of these things organizing and developing and strengthening, especially the one in the Caribbean over here, has it moving hard to the, to the north before making landfall in the Dom eastern Dominican Republic as a strong tropical storm, moves out to sea, starts to st stall similar to that the European is going on, although it does strengthen a lot, it does strengthen pretty slowly, potentially down to a category one hurricane as we go on. And as we look at this Gulf one right here, this thing is quickly organizing and quickly developing, but it's also moving very fast, which could limit the strength of, the, of this system in the long term. It's expected to make landfall Pretty much in between Corpus Christi and Brownsville is a 1,003 tropical cycle, uh, tropical storm rather, 
before moving through South Texas and bringing a lot of rain to that. So that's what we have going on model-wise, folks. We're going to go ahead and show you the factors that are working for and against this. We're, we're, what's easily working for all five of these systems is the global sea temperatures, 28 plus degrees Celsius in all five of these guys' path right here. So this is something I've been paying attention to. Also, the insane amount of ocean heat content, in particular with the two areas of interest that have their biggest threat to land. Where this first one is over the Bahamas, it's in an area of around, over, around 100 OHC, expected to move south of Florida into the loop current, which could potentially enhance some further development right there down the road. We'll have to wait and see what happens because the shear that I've looked at isn't particularly that bad in retrospect. But the one in the Caribbean, it's going to be moving through a consistent area of 100 to 125 to 150 in some areas, ocean heat content. And that's going to be a lot of fuel for these systems to uh, pretty much organize and strengthen and potentially a quick pace. So that's what we have going on. Wind shear across the Caribbean isn't that great for now. However, it is expected to stay to the north of the system, which is giving it plenty of time to organize and develop. But the shear across the Gulf of Mexico is, absolu is absolutely good. It's perfect for development. So we need to pay attention to both of these right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast real quickly, just to give you an understanding of what we're looking at. So here's the shear forecast going, in, according from the European, here's what we have. We're going to start about 48 hours out, and this is what we have going on. This thing starts to organize and strengthen into a tropical depression or weak, low tropical storm right here. The wind shear, once again, stays pretty much to the north of this system right here. Although in the Gulf of Mexico, there is some wind shear that's expected to potentially impact this. However, this looks to me more like it's going to be inflow and outflow than really that much wind shear unless you're like over here off the coast of Florida. But we'll have to wait and see when we come to that bridge. But across the, this system right here, the wind shear does weaken quite a bit as it approaches land, which is giving it an opening for some intensification. We're going to go ahead and show you the relative humidity. Moderately moist air, as we've been saying for several days on this channel. So this definitely has a lot of room and a lot of br uh, breathing room to grow. So this is why I'm paying attention to this moisture component in the Caribbean, it's going to interact with a little bit of dry air, which may hamper its development early on. But by the time it approaches the Dominican Republic, it should be out of that dry air, which if it wasn't for land interaction, it definitely could have strengthened some more on this run. Still stuff we need to pay attention to in the long run. So we're going to go ahead and next show you the European ensembles to kind of give you a better understanding of what all 50 ensemble members are calling for. So Here's what we have going on with this one in the Caribbean. It already is showing a lot of signs of potential development. There are a lot of scenarios of tropical storm and some hurricane scenarios in this one in the Caribbean right here before moving north towards the Dominican Republic, Haiti. And some ensembles do have it potentially hitting eastern Cuba and Jamaica. However, these runs are very concentrated and are pretty confident that it's going to be entering, hit, entering somewhere in Hispaniola, whether it's Haiti or the Dominican Republic. This is Gulf system right here, mainly just tropical storm scenarios right there. I, I do see a couple of weak hurricane scenarios, like maybe 75 mile per hour winds over there. However, not, not that much is really materializing based off of that. It's it's Some of people are saying it's not going to have enough time to really do that much. So it's going to really depend on how good, much these the, it uses the conditions it has. And we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But we're closing the video out right here. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.